What if a human had a neck like a swan? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 61-year-old man who came to my office complaining of neck pain that's been progressive over the past several years. He has had extensive conservative treatment, but over the past recent few years, he's began to develop some numbness in both hands, weakness, and balance troubles. I'm gonna point out a couple of things on a cervical x-ray. First of all, if we look at the curvature of his spine, he is very kyphotic or leaned forward. In addition to that, at C4, 5, 5, 6, and 6, 7, he has severe degenerative changes or not much disc left in here. In addition to that, at C3 and C4, he has an anterior lysis or where the C3 is shifted forward on his C4. On his MRI scan, we see the same thing where his neck is shaped kyphotically or pitched forward, and all of these changes is causing compression on his spinal cord. His neck is hurting because he has a swan neck deformity where his neck is abnormally pitched forward. In addition to that, he has spinal cord compression secondary to all these degenerative changes, this causing his numbness, weakness, and balance troubles. If we look at the cervical spine from the side, you see that our neck should have what's called a lordotic curve or with it leaned back like this. But in this patient, he's leaned forward, kind of like a swan. And while that may be beautiful for a bird, it is not meant for the human spine. As we develop into a walking human, our spine naturally assumes separate curvatures where our cervical spine is lordotic, our thoracic spine is kyphotic or leaned forward, and our lumbar spine is lordotic or leaned backwards. Any changes to these curves secondary to trauma or degeneration can throw off our total spinal alignment. So this person's diagnosis is a swan neck deformity with cervical myelopathy or spinal cord compression. He needs a surgery to fix his overall alignment and to alleviate the pressure on his spinal cord. While he can certainly try other forms of conservative treatment, his spinal cord compression is leading to his weakness and that likely needs to be addressed surgically. That weakness could get worse as time goes on and may become irreversible. We need to realign his spine. These types of cases are one of the most challenging and difficult cases to surgically correct in spine surgery. And like any good surgeon, I love a challenge. Here is a really cool animated video that shows one way that we can correct a cervical kyphosis. Most surgeons come through a combined anterior and posterior approach in order to completely correct and reduce a patient's alignment. In the patient that I had, I also used a combined anterior and posterior approach in order to reduce his kyphosis, restore his natural alignment, as well as take the pressure off of his spinal cord. So what you see in this case is I did a four level anterior cervical discectomy infusion where I removed four discs in the front part of his spine through an incision here and then placed a plate and screws. Two days later, I followed this from a posterior approach where we removed the compression off the spinal cord that I showed you at the MRI and then placed hardware to restore his natural alignment and fix it into place. A surgery like this for me took about three hours to do the anterior part and about three hours to do the posterior part. So he had a combined six hours of surgery split into two surgeries. Of course, this is an extremely hard surgery to recover from and the patient spent about five days in the hospital before being discharged home. He was already walking before he left the hospital and already felt improvement in his arm numbness and weakness. He regained all of the sensation and strength back in his arms within just a few months. You may think with all that hardware in his neck, he wouldn't be able to turn his head at all. But in fact, with a surgery like this, we can preserve about 50% of his range of motion. C1 and C2 provide about 50% of the range of motion in our cervical spine. So because we were able to preserve that joint for him, he is still able to turn his head side to side and up and down. That's some pretty cool stuff. At his six month post-op visit, his pain was already 80% better than his preoperative level of pain. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.